Well, the letters you know about. Then there were the frantic telephone ravings, Pamela on the telephone. Oh, it wasn't difficult. No one was asking, did Pamela call today? Did Pamela send a letter today? Oh, Mason. Those letters to you were so loathsome. If you recall, the few that didn't suggest cutting my throat in the middle of the night would be a nice activity for a young boy I let you have. But I never tried to turn Mason against you. Not consciously. Well, then, Pamela... Why don't you try listing the five or six things that you have done consciously? Or has your whole life been unintentional up until now? But you and intention never were strangers, were you, Sophia? Mistress of the master plan. I was not an accidental woman, Mason. The only exception being Lionel. I researched Pamela like I would research a part. People were only too willing to talk about her. I had her clothes, I kept the ones I liked, I had them altered, just a little bit of CC noticed, he never said anything. I had a manner down pat, just from the few times I saw her, that inbred, expensive ease she was. Polished and fragile and sophisticated and clever. <laughs> Qualities that didn't come naturally to me. You tried, tried to be me? Anyone would have wanted to be you but you, Pamela. It wasn't a caricature. I just opened the window and let in a little air. Darling, I won because I could do you better than you. She's a monster. That's not the whole truth. She always has been. The truth she doesn't is. mean it. He loved me. I discounted it. Who knew what he loved? Since everything about me was a lie, he was quite overpowering about it. At first, I worried it would upset everything that he would see through me, but he didn't ask very much. He asked very little. He seemed as happy when we were in different rooms as when we were in bed together. And all I could have was fear until Channing was born. But then after, I discovered. I didn't want a divorce anymore. I didn't want a career. I didn't want a place of my own. The only thing I wanted was another child that I knew was his. And that was Eden. <laughs> you know, he knew I loved him before I even knew. I thought I was still pretending. But the truth is, I don't know if I would have loved him unless I had married him first. Let's talk about Channing. No, that is one thing I will not discuss. Fine, he's dead and we all know how. Now we can proceed to the next 16 years that you spent dead by drowning yourself, kicking up your heels in some Florentine palazzo while your husband and your children wept over your memorial stone on the hill. Did you spare them a thought, Not listening Sophia? to this. I'd like a question. I have I'd like to. an answer to my question, please. She'll say anything. Did you, did you know? Did you? Out of here! I don't want to hear it! I had to live through it! Must I suffer by going through it all over again? Pamela. I'd let Mason do his worst. I said things about myself that were so ugly and so painful that I would never let anyone in this room say about me in my presence even if they dared. That I don't deserve my family's love, Pamela, is self-evident. But I have it. And they know that they have mine. And no one can ever come in my home again threaten me with my own unworthiness. I cannot hang my head in contrition. A sorry thief who keeps it spoiled is all the more despicable, and I'm not giving up my husband and my happiness. But 
But I can offer you this. For those 16 years, I lived like a beast. No memory, not wanting one, no thoughts. Longer than the pattern in the wallpaper. Pain. And hunger. And noise and sleep and rage. And somewhere in that long, dark line of fury, I killed a boy who called me mother. I went to sleep with rage, and I woke up with it. It was my bread and butter, and people took care of me, and I don't know why. And it passed, and I don't know why. So out of everyone in this room, I can say that I know what you've been through. And I alone in this room room have no right to presume so much.